Hi, in this video we'll be taking a look at two of the coolest developing technologies and how to combine them. Now, what exactly are these technologies? NLPs and graph machine learning. Again, what exactly are they? Let's go one by one. NLP stands for Natural Language Processing, and as you might be able to infer, relates to the field of uh, processing and extracting information from various sources of language and linguistics data. Picture an uh, AI reading and processing books the same way we do. Now, what about graph machine learning? GraphML, although a bit of a more obscure field, is emerging as companies such as Google, Facebook, and LinkedIn continue to utilize it. The advantage? Rather than just modeling data, we can also model the relationships and connections within the data. Uh, take the book reading example from earlier. Now picture an AI that's capable of modeling the characteristics and relationships within a book. In the very near future, we might have AIs capable of uh, summarizing books for us. Since we may not be there just yet, I'd like to showcase a bit of a more of a basic demo, but that still combines both of the two technologies. To start, I'd like to give a basic overview of the workflow. The objective will be visualization of natural language through a graph database. If you've seen my last video, you'll probably know that I'll be using TigerGraph, a fast and scalable platform for graph analytics. In TigerGraph, data is modeled with vertices connected by edges, with vertices representing important data points and edges representing the relationship between them. First, I'd like to show you the text we'll be processing and projecting. Cristiano Ronaldo is a Portuguese footballer who plays as a forward for Juventus. Now try to picture for yourself how you would model this excerpt as a graph, and you have a rough idea of what the demo consists of. For natural language processing, I'll mainly be using the Spacey Engine, although the popular NLTK library can also be used uh, for accuracy improvement. That last sentence probably sounded an awful lot like gibberish. The Spacey Engine is used for, to recognize entities such as people or organizations, like in this case Cristiano Ronaldo in Juventus, and understand what the text means as a whole, while NLTK has built in uh, functions to improve the accuracy and performance. For example, NLTK can be used to group together similar word, words called limit, limitization, or eliminate unimportant words, such as, which are called stop words detract from the meaning of the text. Since uh, data being processed only cons uh, since the data being processed here only consists of one sentence, this functionality functionality may not be necessary here, although I've still kept the code present uh, in case it can provide benefits. Spacey then provides performs entity recognition, identifies the entities present in the sentence. Using noun chunks, uh, Spacey performs dependency parsing to make sense of the text. After all the NLP stuff is done, the next part is visualization in TigerGraph. To do so, I use TigerGraph's Python uh, library or Python package to connect to a free TigerGraph database. With a bit of crawling around the documentation, I figured out how to use GSQL operations to create vertices and uh, edges and graphs. To see the demo in action, we'll first want to head over to the TigerGraph cloud and start up our instance. And here is the instance I've used for the demo, which is currently stopped at the moment due to inactivity. So I'll just start this up, and this will take around uh, five minutes. So I'll be right back when this is done. Once the instance is running, we're all set to run the demo. I had set up an Anaconda virtual environment for all the necessary packages, so that's what I'll be using. Now we can run the program. Here 
here it lists the entities, which are Cristiano Ronaldo, person, Portuguese, NORP, Juventus organization. It does list the main subject, which again is Cristiano Ronaldo, and it created a vertex Ronaldo for Ronaldo. It uh, created a vertex for footballer, which is an attribute, uh, and it created a vertex for forward, which is another attribute, and another vertex for Juventus, which is another attribute. And then once all the vertex uh, vertices are created, uh, an edge type, an undirected edge from each attribute to the main subject, which is Ronaldo, should also be created. And uh, now we can go into Graph Studio, reload the page, and it should have created a graph. In this case, yeah, it's created a graph called Ronaldo Graph. And if we go into here, we can check out the design schema. And as you can see, we now have Ronaldo as a, vert a vertex and Juventus footballer and forward as attribute vertices and uh, an edge for association. And there we go, that's the demo. Uh, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. Until next time, bye.